I was working for the New South Wales Health Commission mm -hmm. in a school dental clinic at Springwood. Yeah. And I had a faulty amalgamator, mm -hmm. which sprayed mercury over me for two years. It sprayed it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, the hands used to fly off the machine and used to explode in my face everywhere. I now have a fifth of my sight left. I'm almost blind, can't see, can't read anything. This is the way I got the mercury, and it went from bad to worse. Then it affected my whole family from then on. The first side effects I had, which seemed a bit silly to go to a doctor and say, was it was twitching mm -hmm. of the eyes and nose and things like that. And I didn't, I thought it was very, very um, elementary. I thought, you know, to go to a, would you go to a doctor and say, Doctor, my nose is twitching or my eyes twitching? You don't go and say those sort of things to a doctor. So I didn't go and say anything. Uh, then I noticed I got numbness of the lips, mm -hmm. all in my mouth, my tongue, everything went numb. Then in the end I started collapsing at work. I just collapsing at work. Collapsed at work. And the girls would ring that up and say, you better come and get her. She clapped her on the floor. Mm -hmm. Well, put her in the chair. You'll have to come and get her because she's, um, mm. she's just collapsed and so we don't know what's wrong with her. Mm. No one knew what was wrong with me. No one had any idea. No. And it was Dr. Redding who... Dr. Redding. Redding yeah. was the one who diagnosed it. Mm. He was the one who found it out. Yeah. And he did what tests to find it out? Yeah. He did... Yes, he tested me, blood tests, he hair tests. analysis. 24 hour urine tests, mm. all proved positive. And, uh, and I had 80 times above the normal level. I don't know how I survived. I don't know how I was alive. I don't know for one moment how I survived the whole thing. And uh, again, tell really us again how he uh, treated it. How he... Well, when he treated, he didn't know how to treat it, of course, mm. at the time. So they remembered Minamata mm -hmm. in Japan. You know where the women and children were poisoned. Um, so they contacted Dr. Shahada in Japan and he told them what to do, what he did. And they actually gave me great big uh, 10 mil vitamin injections for 10 years. And that's what saved my life. That's vitamin C, vitamin A, okay. vitamin B, all the vitamins okay. in separate ones. I used to have 10 mil injections, calcium. 10 mil injections every day of my life. I had abscesses. I used to scream when he had to dress. The doctors at Mary's used to have to dress the abscesses because I had to have so many just to save my life. Many times I was going to throw the towel in, give it away, and he pleaded with me. No, fight it. Fight it. And we'll save you. And he did. He mm. saved me. And yeah. it was Dr. Shahata in Japan who told him what to do. Because no one else knew what to do. There was no one in Australia at that stage. I was told at that stage I was the only one in Australia that ever had it. And I didn't know of anyone else, you know. 30 years ago it happened. Mm. And I've been slowly, slowly, slowly getting worse and worse and worse. Mm. And they tell me now it eats into the bones. And my um, orthopaedic man acknowledged that and said yes. It ate, ate into your knee, and if I hadn't done your knee replacement, it was the longest one he'd ever done. If mm -hmm. I hadn't done it when he did, I would have lost my leg. If I'd have gone another few days, I would have lost my leg. So now I've got this fracture in the pelvis from it. Yep. And we don't know what the outcome yet is for that. We don't know yet. I'm hoping it's just going to be rest, yeah. and with rest, it's going to heal. But how do we know it might have to have a pen or something put in? I don't know. Yeah, when I, I was doing the um, laundering of the towels yeah. at the clinic to get extra money, because it was expensive, the treatment, um, I started collapsing, right? I couldn't do it any longer. So mum and dad very kindly said they would take over the laundering of the towels. Mm -hmm. um, and they did. Mum died a terrible death. It took her 18 months to die. She got it from doing it, and also Dad. He took longer. His was chronic, Mum's was acute, but it only took her 18 months. Now, my two little dogs, the little Corgi, 
she got it in the bones like me. She had to have her front leg amputated. They even gave her chemotherapy to try and say that. The little Scottish Terrier, Bonnie, she got it like mum in the liver. Mm. And it also killed her. It causes cancer too. It can cause cancer. Did but I was very lucky because of, because I was on the treatment. I was there all up to date on the cancer, thank goodness. Up to date. So the towels were contaminated? Yeah, all, they were contaminated too. Mercury. With mercury. Mm. Did Dr. Redding test them too for mercury yep. poisoning? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You know blood, blood tests, uh, hair analysis. They were pretty high, but not as high as me. I had the highest amount of any of us. Hmm. So they got they found it too late with them. Yeah. By the time they found it out with them, it was too late, and they couldn't give them the treatment. It was too late for them. You see, because he didn't know they had it at the start, mm -hmm. and the same with Bonnie and Tammy. They didn't know. They were lying on the lambs wolves. That's how they got it. And the lambs wolves. Yeah, it went. They were going in our washing machine. They lied on the lambs wolves, mm -hmm. and because they lied on the lambs wolves, um, it went through the skin huh. and infected them. Now I had to throw all those lambs wolves out and get all brand new ones because that's how they got it. Yeah. So the whole washing machine was yep. contaminated. It was contaminated. And contaminating and we had other to throw things. Throw it out and get a new washing machine. Mm. But it was too late. It, it contaminated the whole family. I lost my whole family. All I got out of it was 20000 That's all I got compensation. It was take it or leave it. That was the uh, health the department? Health department. Every time a court case was pending, they blocked it. They blocked it. They mm. came in and they stuck up and they blocked it. And I didn't get any. I didn't. And it was either take it or leave it. So I thought the best thing was to take it and have a little bit of money rather than have nothing. Mm -hmm. That's all I got. And I lost my whole family. I've also lost my own health. I'm deteriorating day by day. I'm getting worse. But I'm keeping bright and I'm trying to keep above it. I get allergy every morning. From food? Yep. I block up, can't breathe. Every morning I go through this, like an asthma. Tell me uh, the story, what they did with the clinic that got all um, oh, the clinic. contaminated. Yeah. Yeah. The clinic was contaminated then. They knew something was going on, you see, mm. and I was investigating. And they, because I'd taken it to a few places, like today, tonight, I took it to 60 Minutes, um, um, to a few places like that. And they didn't like that. So anyway, that was all right. So. We thought they demolished it, you see, it disappeared. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a little article in the local paper, which I got hold of, and I took it up to Springwood, and there were girls up there, and there was a girl up there who was expecting her first baby. Now, they'd been told nothing about this business. That poor girl hadn't been told a thing about it, you know, to beware with a first baby and to be careful. And they'd locked up the room... They, they wouldn't let anyone near the room, of course. When the barrister came out and found the building had gone, they tested the earth up in Springwood and found mercury traces in the earth. Right? But the building was gone. But when the barrister got up there, the building wasn't gone. It hadn't been demolished at all. Do you know what they were doing with it? It was down in Penrith Hospital grounds, being used as a technician's room. They'd taken out the floorboards, put new ones in. They put a window in the room, but everything was changed. It was still contaminated. Didn't matter what they said, it was still contaminated. So, anyway, I said, oh, that's great, isn't it? Someone else is being poisoned now. They're now poisoning the technicians in Penrith Hospital grounds. So now I don't know, from now on, I don't know where it is or what it's doing. Mm. I, haven't, I haven't been able to get there to sort of find out what's going on. Never heard any more about it. So I don't know. That's the history of it. That's the history of um, how yeah, mercury poisoning, how got mercury poisoning, how I got sick, how that... Mm.